an inflation reduction act that yep. costs what was it? I, I had it up here earlier. Seven hundred thirty nine seven billion dollars. <laughs> because that's how you fight inflation by printing and spending more money you don't have. That's right. Well, okay. <laughs> And I, I'm gonna. I, I actually I have a visual aid here. Hopefully, it doesn't give you visual aids like Fauci. <laughs> okay. Now, I, because I've actually heard this argument from leftoids, and it's it's one of my favorites. So I'm gonna put it on the split screen here so you guys can see a little bit better. Now, see this. It, let's say this glass represents a dollar. Okay. Or, or, or all the money in the United States? No, no. This this glass this $1. represents a dollar, uh -huh. and the wine inside represents the value of said dollar. Okay, now the Federal Reserve decides we need to print more money. So they double the amount of dollars. Okay. Oh. So now this is still technically a dollar. But now you can only get one candy bar instead of two for a dollar. There you go. And it goes on and on ad nauseum. And people actually, there are leftoids who think, well, you just print more money and it'll solve the problem because that doesn't cause problems or nothing. And those people got a gender studies degree that didn't have economics <laughs> or, uh, you know, higher level math or uh, statistics. Basically, yep. uh, you know, they got a degree in... You know, bumble fuckery. Yeah. That's the only word I could come up with. Jimmy Bones is like, are we going to get whiny, Blake, tonight? I was like, you think I'm going to mix wine with whiskey? You out of your mind? <laughs> I've done it many a time, and I was fine. Check your blood pressure, and tell me when you feel the lie. <laughs> 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 I'm just telling you. <laughs> I've never been a puker when it comes to drinking, so. Well, I know. But, uh, but you know, to talk about this, this is just... Yeah, it's ridiculous. How, it do, how do you? I mean, I know you have the whole business advantage, spend money to make money, but most of the people who spout off these platitudes don't even understand how money works. Skid understands how it works. That's why he made this whole video here, and I'm just going to play you a portion of it because this is freaking genius. Yeah, um, he's going through here and explaining, you know, how the feds and the banks and the treasury have managed to circumvent the separation of powers and create this whole circle jerk. Well, hang on. They're not the only ones doing this. Oh, I know. We have, we have literally, we have the executive branch acting like a dictator now. <laughs> hmm. You know, he, I don't know. I, there Maybe there's images of that on Hunter's laptop. Maybe. Starring <laughs> maybe. Hunter. I'm probably getting a foot job from his knees. But, you know, so. they, get, they get swatted down by, by, you know, the Supreme Court. They just go right around and say, fuck it, we're going to do it anyway. That's pretty much it. Well, because they know that bureaucracy slows things down, which is what it's designed to do. So they yeah. they pass these mandates. They're not even legislation. They're mandates. Mm -hmm. And then they're hoping that enough damage is done by the time it gets injuncted by a court where they can push it through in a softer version next time and get more of what they want. And, and listen, all of that would come to an end if this uh, qualified immunity these lawmakers enjoy went away. I'm amen to that. So I'm going to play a little bit of uh, Skid's video here. This All is right. some good stuff. Sorry, you got me in the weeds. I know. The bank doesn't want to keep the Treasury securities, so the Fed buys them. Now, you might ask, why doesn't the Fed just buy from the Treasury directly? Not allowed to by law. They're supposed to stay separate. Hmm. However, they have this big open market shell game, basically. So really what ends up happening is the securities flow to the Fed, although there are other places that the Treasury securities end up like China, but we'll get to that later. And inevitably, central bank reserves come back to the Treasury to spend on things. So the Treasury wins, the bank wins, because as all this happens, they take their cut, and the Fed wins, because over here, they've managed to create money and make the money system go. Now, who loses in all this? You, my friend, because these things here and these things here all have interest owing on them. So somebody has to pay the interest on this debt. That somebody is you as you pay taxes to the treasury. Yeah. 
That's fucking spot on, man. And that's just a portion. This is a almost 29-minute video. I highly recommend going to his channel and checking it out. Thank, thank, thank you very much. Uh, as, as you guys know, I was doing that uh, that firefighting job, the aerial forest firefighting job there this summer. And, of course, there's a lot of time spent in the ready room just kind of waiting. And so I spent some of no. that uh, reading because I was really curious, you know, like, how, what, what, what is quantitative easing? How, how does the central bank print money? Like, what, mm. what does it all mean? And I went through uh, this <clears throat> book. I have nothing to do with this guy. This is uh, Joseph Wang wrote this book called Central Banking 101. <laughs> like, it took me a month. It's a great book. But I figured that from what I learned from that, I'd share it with you guys. And that's what I made the video because, my God, it's... It's a pretty impressive shell game. It took me a long time to sit there and go, how is this stuff actually going back and forth? You know, at the end of the day, sure, it's simple, but it takes a bit of understanding. And I guess part of my frustration was I'd seen some documentaries on this kind of stuff. I'd been watching videos and looking at websites and nothing was clear. It's like either explaining at a kindergarten level, so that's not helping, or it's too complicated, or they're not using the, the the proper terminology. So I tried to make something that it uses the right terms for how things work. And so, so yeah, yeah. I, I hope it helps. And it's very, very appropriate from what you guys are uh, talking about today, because expanding uh, the money supply is exactly what they're doing by paying off all these student loans and by that inflation act. So yep. all of that word salad you just spouted... <laughs> What you were trying to say is you took this incredibly complicated financial book explaining the douchebaggery and you broke it down so a grunt can understand it. That's what we do here. Yeah. yeah and uh, well, I guess and we could start by saying one, one thing right now, uh, uh, Blake, you said the, the Fed was uh, printing more money. Actually, that's not what the Fed does. The Fed doesn't uh, inject more money into the system. They just make sure the system works. It's the Treasury that uh, actually puts more money into the system. Well, the, U the U.S. Treasury is like that's that. It's the same. You could go back to ancient Rome. <coughs> the Treasury is where they used to keep all the gold. Right. The Treasury is what takes the money in and it's what puts the money out and so every year since you know uh, you have inflation acts and this tuition paying stuff the treasury is spending more than it's bringing in in revenue so how does it cope with that with what is the deficit well it writes ious and those ious are called treasury bills that's how you print money into the system yep yep yeah listen now, in the, 1980 the Fed, oh go ahead in 1980, I used to come back from middle school and swing by the uh, hardware store and buy five candy bars for a dollar. Not now anymore. I can, I can buy one candy bar for almost two dollars. I remember when, uh, well, I mean, we can all remember when gas was like 99 cents a gallon, less than that. Like, you remember watching Die Hard? Yeah. And, and there's that shot, you know, where Al Powell comes out of the of the gas station after he gets his Twinkies and he looks up and it pans up and there's the gas station sign. It's like 67 cents. I'm like, and that was in California, Stan. Yeah. Shit. Yeah, don't get me started on the uh, gas taxes because they... They always start a gas tax telling you, oh, it's for the schools. Oh, and, and, and you don't fucking know Bullshit. what happens. Bullshit. It's money. for it's for corrupt bureaucrats to skim off the top. That's all taxation is for. That's absolutely correct. Yeah, no, yeah, yeah, for sure, for sure. And uh, you know, of course, the the guys who really talk about this, you know, like like Aaron Clary Cappy definitely knows about this. The other guys, oh, would be, he's uh, a G George Gammon over at uh, Rebel Capitalist. I mean, those are the guys to go to on this. But uh, yeah. It, if you're just going to print money, and we can describe what that really means later, but if you're just going to inject more money in the system, you do exactly what Blake had there. You're just making more glasses. Yep. But the goods and services, which is the wine in the glass, is staying the same. So yep. that's demand-side economics. It means that you're going to pay more. Yep. There's also a supply-side problem, which we encountered during COVID, when the supply chain starts breaking down. If you can't get that wine to start with, it doesn't matter how many glasses you have. It, you, there's no wine there. And mm -hmm. so people are going to try and get as many glasses as they can to get that wine. That's that's uh, supply-side inflation, too. So yeah. it's, it's a pretty complicated system that if you're just going to keep screwing with it, 
Uh, it's, it's not going to work uh, out. And it makes you wonder. It makes you wonder why, if this is so important to our everyday economic existence, we mm. are not taught it in school. I know. Because, well, I mean, it, it's the same reason they sent women to work. It's because they wanted women to be taxed and they wanted the children to be raised by the state or mm. indoctrinated. Let's just call it exactly what it is. Yep. That's why civics went away. Women's studies and gender studies came in. And that's why as soon as, uh, what, what were they called? I want to make sure that I get this right. Clinton signed these into law in 1998. The higher education amendments, as soon as that happened, that's when you had general education requirements that had to include some sort of sociology or social science. Okay. When I was going through OU, Oakland University, in 96, uh, nine, yeah, 95 and 96, um, I I was bitching about the fact that I had to take all kinds of fucked up classes just to get to my core classes. And it was just infuriating. Yeah. And a lot of them were fucking stupid ass classes that, oh, they'll make you a, a better, well-rounded person. I'm like, I don't want to be a rounded person. I want to be a thin person who does his job well. <laughs> Fuck off. <laughs> Watch Gun Speak live every Tuesday and Thursday at 8 p.m. Eastern. And if you want to join Pop for Supporter Sundays, go to redonculus.com slash donate and make a monthly pledge. A link is in the Meat Gazer box.